In this video, I'm gonna share with you my experience with opening a shop and also some steps that you can take to get to where you can open a shop and also make sure that you're not going overboard with your ideas and your pace of which you get to this point. So I made a list. Ta-da, nice and organized. So at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna tell you what I did to gain my skills and network and all these types of things. And then I'm gonna show you one of the steps that I took to get my shop and what it takes to actually run the shop in general. Because it might not be something you want, it might be something that would work out great for you. Just uh, bear with me as I get through these talking points. The first things first is your, whatever you're gonna sell, you have to gain the skills in making this certain item. So that could be you know, soap making, it could be ceramics like what I do, it could be photography, it could be really anything, reselling of any sort. So what you're gonna need to do is gain the skills it takes to sell these items. So if you get big orders, you can actually sustain them and keep going because a lot of artists make the mistake of going in over their heads on orders before they've gotten the skills down. People are gonna see your products that you post online and they're gonna say, I want 100 of these. You're gonna to need to be sure that you can do these orders and also be able to say no to orders that you can't fulfill and be honest with yourself because this is where artists get burnout and they quit. I see it all the time. They quit when it gets hard, hard. And it gets hard, hard because they don't gain the skills and they're not comfortable enough in their skills to take these orders. So I say in ceramics, let's just take my example, of course, don't start selling until you're like two, three years in of learning the craft because a lot of people, they start and then they can't keep up. It's hard. Ceramics is a very hard skill and it takes a lot of time to master. On to my next point. Well, how do I do this? Do I go to school? Do I find a job? Do I, what do I do to get, get my skills to this point? The first thing you're gonna need is some sort of entry class, something to get you going. It could be a six week class, it could be up to a year. I wouldn't say go into college debt for arts, but it might be a move, but I'm not gonna advocate for that because I don't think it's that necessary. What I would do is take a entry course, then go find mentors. Mentors are gonna be the people that get you to the next level 10 times as fast as college because it's a real life experience. They actually have been in the industry. They're gonna be able to not BS you and tell you go this route, not this route. Or they'll say, ah, this route has this complications at your own risk instead of theory in college because we waste way too much money in the college system. I'm not gonna get onto this too much. We waste way too much money on college as artists. It makes sense in STEM. Science, technology, your engineering and math makes sense. But as an artist, you can learn all these skills on YouTube or through a mentor. I would suggest both. Go on YouTube, research, research, research. Go find a mentor. Ask them if you can sweep their studio. Ask them if they, you can help them with small tasks. Get in their studio. See how they operate. See how they dry their pots in mass. See how they produce their pots in mass and see how they're processing their orders. Are they shipping their orders? Do they have a shop? All these things matter. It matters so much. You have to learn these things. If you don't, you're gonna be swamped. We're gonna go right back to step number one and we're gonna not do it and it's gonna be swamped whenever we try to get to step four, five, six. It's really that simple. Please, please, please do not start selling your work before you're ready. If you don't look at your work and then, don't wanna to compare too much, but like look at other artists who are making it for a living. If your work is not at that level, don't sell. Get the skills, it's not a bad thing, it's a learned trade. Is a welder going to be fantastic their first weld, second weld, one year even in? 
Probably not. It's the master welders who make the money. It's the people who have put the skills in to get to this point. It's so, so important. You have to learn. Okay, next thing I wanna go over is apprenticeships. After you have some mentor time for one, two, three, four years, find an apprenticeship. Find somewhere where you can go and work. Maybe it's a paid apprenticeship. Maybe it's actually working for a studio or facility. Work for someone else. You can't be a good boss unless you're good at working for someone else. It's very, very important. It's very hard <laughs> to do once you get the skills down because you're gonna be like, I can do this by myself. Take a breath, learn from them, even though the pay is not gonna be great. It's gonna be worth it because it's gonna pay off in the long run. If you don't do it, you're gonna get swamped. You're gonna get swamped if you don't take the time to work for others and gain these hard skills. You have to gain them. You can't go into all this business fairy tale land and not get the skills. So many people do it and they fail. They fail. That's why artists fail. They fail all the time. I see it all the time. People who are 10 times as talented as me, they don't go and through these steps and learn the actual business sides of things and they jump in and drown. It's sad. And then they end up working a job they don't wanna work. Which brings me on to my next point. Work your job while you gain the skills. Don't quit your job and go to fantasy land. Stay in your nine to five, find a mentor you can fill these extra hours instead of watching Netflix or playing Xbox or blah, blah, blah. Go apply it at an actual place and gain the hard skills. You have to. Don't jump off a cliff into entrepreneurial land. It's hard, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of sweat, and it's very, very stressful. It's rewarding, yes, if you do these things. Back to finding an apprenticeship. I worked down towards Austin for a pottery and I made hundreds of pots a week for $12 an hour. I was starving. It was not great in that aspect, but I learned how to process pots in a day. I learned how to dry them within a week and I learned how to fire them fast. Things I did not know how to do. Glaze fast, trim fast, throw fast, all on their studio dime, which was making their pots with their clay. So I'm not spending a bunch of money to learn these skills. I am learning through other masters. I'm around a potter who's been doing it for 10 years, and I'm around a guy who's been doing it since the 70s. Think of the knowledge you're gonna be soaking in from these people. It's so important. Do you learn that in two years of school in a, a couple of semesters of an art class? No, you don't. You learn 10 times as much as an art class in an apprenticeship or paid apprenticeship. After Austin, I came back to work for a lamp company. I worked there for a very short time for reasons, but I learned mass production on a, a for doing molds and all these sorts of things. And I learned how we drop ship to Ethan Allen, but we're not just drop shipping, we're making the items, packing them up, putting the labels on, stacking them on a crate. They come, put it on, a, on an 18 wheeler and take it off to Ethan Allen where they then sell it. I learned this, I learned all these things. It's like, wow, you can actually make a good living at this. This is how you do it. This is what this guy, this guy's business savvy. Not much of an artist, but he knows how to do this. This person's an artist, not so much business savvy. How could they have done better? Work for different places, see and take what they did good and see what they did not so good and make your own thing. This is how you're gonna make it. You have to learn these skills. It's not just art. It's not just art. You have to put in the time to learn a business. If you don't learn business, you are not going to make it. You're gonna drown. Back to the beginning, we're gonna drown once it gets real. And then I, after the lamp shop, I worked for a, a few other people. And then I got into this realm after seven years. Seven years. Seven, seven. I took my first class seven years ago. 
Put that in your head. So many people are trying to start their selling and all this less than a year into making. It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. You're never going to make it. Maybe you might, maybe you might, but you're not. It's going to be freaking hard because you haven't laid the groundwork. You haven't laid the groundwork. So after I did the apprenticeship down in Austin, I came back to Dallas, worked for a lamp company, worked for another potter, and then it was time. It was time to shine. So I started selling at shows and I started selling literally off the side of the street on one of the hottest corners in Dallas and I did well. It was, it was good and the overhead was small and I was just learning how to talk to customers, learning how to do all these things, getting feedback, what do they like, what do they don't like, all these things. So, so once you've done all these hard skills, you went to, you did the three years, you did the apprenticeship, you did all these things, all the hard sweat work that you should do, don't cut corners, start selling at some shows, start selling at a booth, start getting some feedback from customers, see what they buy and don't buy. Don't get stuck in your artistic ways and make things that people don't wanna buy. Just because you love it doesn't mean the customer, the consumer's gonna love it. You have to make things that people want to buy or you're not gonna, you're not gonna swim, you're gonna sink. So that's nice. I did some niche shows, niche. I did some niche shows like a beer event where I made a bunch of beer steins, even some dinnerware, went to, uh, the, went to the Texas Rangers Stadium and I sold beer mugs at a big beer event, made $4,000 in one day. Four grand one day, booth fee was about 400 bucks, something like that. But I was the only vendor there. I emailed them, said, hey, would you think about uh, having a, some beer steins for sale there? They weren't, it wasn't really, it was like you buy, you buy tickets and you go to each brewer and you get to try their beers. It wasn't like a, an art fair. I made so much money there in one day. You can do it. You just have to find these niche things. Art shows can get kind of dicey because there's so much competition. There's so much competition and booth fees are low and you're gonna, it's gonna be hard. What really got me, before I got to this shop, what really helped me was selling at the corner of one of the hottest spots in Dallas. So I sold at this spot and I had a little booth and it was under an awning so I didn't have to set up a tent. Uh, she had tables at a certain point, she had tables ready. And so all I had to do is plot my stuff down and just give her 20% and market tested this area that I wanted to be in. I came back to Dallas and I said, this is where I wanna be. This area is popping, it's artsy, traffic every weekend, good locals, nice people. This is where I wanna be. And if you're wondering, I'm in Bishop Arts, Dallas. Find me, Salter Pottery, Bishop Arts. So, I said, I want to be here. This is where I want to be. I actually have a picture of me in front of this exact shop a year before I got it saying, this is where I want to be. Sadly, I don't have that picture anymore. I don't have that picture anymore, unfortunately. So, so I started selling at the corner and I started getting feedback and all these things and I was making decent money and I was, just interacting, had regulars coming back and all these things. I started looking around at different landlords and, and all these different spaces out here. I couldn't quite find what I wanted. And then I say it was the Lord working with me. I say it was the Lord working with me and showing me where to go as a person came by, Hannah, she owns a plant shop right across the street. She came to my booth, said, hey, we're about to reopen our store and we think that this would be a cool combo. So I put my, long story short, I put my studio in this space as they reopened and here we are, we're in this space. So fast forward, we open up the shop and around six months later, I end up buying the shop and taking it over completely. And I was super blessed to have met them and their help with my journey. They taught me how to do square. They taught me how to do taxes. They taught me how to talk to customers. They taught me how to interact, restock, all these things I'm about to talk about. And I was extremely blessed. I was, it was hard work, dedication, six, seven years of 
slaving away at the craft, all led to this moment to get this shop. So, but who knows? I might not be in the shop in five years. I might not be in the shop in two years, but it's where I am right now. And I'm always thinking forward. What's the next move? So, that was a little, that was a, that was a little background on how I got here. Now I want to talk about the realities. The realities. I want to talk about reality with you guys. You have to be realistic. Fantasy land doesn't work. It really, really doesn't. It doesn't at all. What does it take to run a shop? What are the things you're going to need to kind of start thinking about? Do you even want a shop? Do you want to do the show thing? There's pros and cons. Do you want to do a shop? Pros and cons. So, I have a list because I'm organized. All right. First thing, rent. You're going to have a rent. You got to pay a rent. I'm in one of the hottest spots in Dallas and I got rent. I'll tell you, I got rent. Security deposit. To get in there, usually your rent plus these two rents for the security deposit. Utilities, triple net or utilities. My landlord takes care of the, the utilities and I pay, I pay a triple net, which includes water, heating, uh, if something goes wrong in the front bushes, blah, 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 the building needs something done, it's all included in the triple net. So you're gonna have that cost, which is a cost. Taxes, are you gonna learn about taxes when you're at your booth, doing your booth thing? and testing the market, I hope so. I really hope so. Let me tell you from experience, you better. Sales tax, you gonna set up that sales tax and pay it? I hope so. Insurance, you gotta have insurance. You gotta have it. Cha-ching, cha-ching, you hear these money signs going up? You hear these money signs? Employees, you gonna work here every day? You never gonna take a day off? No, you gotta have, to have someone to cover these, these shifts and they gotta be good. Props and furniture. All this stuff costs money. All these shelves, all this, this table here, everything costs money, everything. You're gonna have startup costs. POS system, is it gonna be an iPad? Is it gonna be a square card reader thing uh, with a touch screen? Are you going to go in all in, just have like a little, you know, you have something to take the money. You gotta take the money. Bagging, you gotta bag all your stuff. You gotta bag it for the customers. You gotta have tissue paper to wrap for gifts. You gotta have paper to wrap the stuff. Bags, 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 bags. You're always gonna be buying bags. CPA, are you gonna have someone doing your taxes for you? You're gonna do it for yourself and hopefully do it right? I suggest having a CPA. I'm not good in that realm. They're gonna be more savvy than you, probably worth the money. Long hours. Are you prepared for the long hours to get this thing running? Are you prepared to put in the time to get the, see. Long hours do come, but they're less if you have put the skills in before and are fast. If you make pots fast, you're not gonna be up, have to be up here as long. Back to the first thing. Get the hard skills. Higher overhead. All those things I just talked about is overhead. Rent, insurance, employees, bags, CPA, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff I just listed, overhead. Think about it. Do you want that over your head? It's literally over your head. You don't sell well that month, it's over your head. You worry, are you ready for that stress? Are you ready to adapt and overcome? Are you ready to say, this wasn't working, so I need to add this, or this wasn't working, take away this, add this? You have to always think. High stress level, are you ready for the high stress? Are you ready? Because it's gonna be here. It's going to, it's going to hit. High stress is going to hit. <sighs> Those are a few things that come with running in a shop. Now, Stephen, that sounds terrible. Why would I ever want to run a shop? Good traffic in a good area. You got location's key. Get a good spot. 
you get to form relationships with your customers. They get to come back and they get to know you and you get to know them. It's actually pretty fun. Live feedback, you make a product. Live feedback, so you make a product, and you're like, I wonder if this is gonna sell, put it out on the shelves, it starts selling, it's a good product. Easy. Quick adjusting, oh, I don't like how this is looking in the shop, or I don't like how this is moving, I don't like how this is going, quick adjustment. It's easy to, it's easy to do in a shop. You don't have to wait for the next show in a week or wait for this. You just next same day, switch it up, see if it works. No setup and tear down. The worst part about doing a show is setting it up and tearing it down. It gets exhausting. It's exhausting. It really, really is. You don't have to do that in the shop. You have to set it up and maintain it. But from there on, you just kind of, you know, zhuzh it up as my wife says. And then, you're gonna get a lot of more local news and, and media opportunities and, and accomplishments. I've had a Dallas Morning News feature, I've had a D Home Magazine feature, and I've had a Dallas Observer feature all within six months. So you're gonna have a lot more exposure if you have a cool, cool shop. Local support, locals are gonna to get to know you. They're gonna come back, they're gonna have a conversation with them, you're gonna, they're gonna come back, you're gonna have a conversation with them. Next thing you know, they're buying sets and they're, they're really supporting you. You gotta treat your locals good and you gotta be personal with them. Say, welcome back, welcome back. Try to remember everybody. You're gonna, you're gonna see thousands of people. Try to remember everybody. It really is important. Local, the local business community, you're gonna to get to know these business owners. It's actually really, really fun. You get to know these local business owners, maybe um, do a little bit of cross um, networking and cross uh, promotion. Pretty fun, it really is. You're definitely gonna, if everything goes how you, it should and you learn the hard skills and you can make fast and keep up, you should get more sales. So it kind of balances out all this overhead. So, so those are a few of the pros to having a shop. There's of course more cons and more pros. I don't want this to be two hours long, but first things first, get the hard skills. So back to the checklist, what are we gonna do? We just learned a skill. Learn it more, get mentors, take apprenticeships, take three years working another job and getting this skills down. Work your nine to five, get the skills down. Then go and work for someone. Go work under someone, learn the skills, learn the skills, learn the skills, learn the skills. Then test the market, test the market, test the market. Shows, booths, that booth didn't do good. Why? Because of this X, Y, Z. This show didn't do good, don't do it again. Go try to find another show. Try to find shows that are two, three days long. Try to find a hot corner with a, a store like I did that will let you sell in front of their store and test the market. Try all these things. Try, try, try. Well, you're probably still gonna be working a regular job. And then look into how much rent is costing in the area. If you wanna go the store route, if you want to go to the store route, look at how much rent is going for in the area. Look how much triple nets and, and utilities are going for in the area. Look at how much traffic is going down that particular street. All these things, is it visible? Is it pretty? Is it aesthetic? All these things, is, am I gonna have to do a bunch of work on the inside of this place to get it to look nice? Am I not? All these things you're gonna have to start accounting for. Make a calculated decision, calculated. Am I good enough for this? Honestly, ask yourself that. Am I good enough skills-wise to keep up? Don't sink. The worst thing for an artist to do is sink and just sink and sink and sink and not climb out. It generally has to do with the first steps, not getting the skills down. You may be skillful at getting one or two things at a time, but we need to get 20 things at a time. All this stuff matters. Didn't get a CPA? get your taxes in order, all these things. If it all makes sense, start the business. Start the shop. 
I would suggest doing shows for at least a couple of years and then see if it's worth it. May not be worth it. You may make way more money in shows. You may like that lifestyle. Stay there. The shows are great. If, if you want to do this, the shop route, really do your research and then make an educated decision. Don't get burnt out. Don't get burnt out to the point where it's, you can't come back. It's high stress. It really is. I hope y'all found this video informative and honest. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Maybe I'll have a part two to this. Who knows? Till next time, I'll see you. And please keep practicing and getting those skills down. And you will be successful if you put the freaking effort. Peace, y'all.